Hi everyone and welcome to DIY Pet Accessories or if you've been before, welcome back! Today's video is going to be a bit of a long one. I'm going to take you through this paracord flower braid dog collar from the very start to the very end so everything you need to know is in this video. For measurements, a lot of maths is actually involved in this so I've given you a cheat sheet in the description below that shows you the length you'll need to braid and how much starter cord you'll need. The sheet also gives you roughly how many flowers you can fit onto each size. You can usually squeeze in one more, so plan for that. For each flower, you will need about two foot of cord. Now I'm doing different coloured flowers today, so I've got two foot for every flower already prepped. If you're doing the same colour, you will just take two foot for every cord and have one very long strand. Other measurement info will be in the description, because honestly, if I talk you through that, you'll be here for days. So with all that said, let's get into it. For this collar you will need your hardware. I'm using a side release buckle and weld D-ring. The size you use will be dependent on your dog but I'll put a rough guide in the description. Next you will need your starter cord. I'm using bright pink for this so you can see but use whatever colour you like. Again the measurements for this will be in the cheat sheet. I have two colours prepped for the flowers as I'm going to show you how to do different coloured flowers for this collar. For Poirot's size I can fit 10 flowers on his collar so I'm using 5 strands of dark purple and 5 strands of light purple. For the centre of the flowers I'm using Shambhala style beads for a bit of sparkle. For the beads you will need cord or similar that fits through the centre. I'm using micro cord just a couple inches longer than my collar length but again use whatever you have to hand or whatever you prefer. You will also need a ruler to measure, scissors for cutting, a lighter for singeing cord and needle nose pliers. Anyway, before I bore you all to absolute tears, let's get braiding. So I've taken apart my side release buckle and I have my D-ring here. What I'm going to do is take my starter cord and I'm going to find the centre and I'm going to use this to create a double lark's head knot to attach my D-ring to one half of my buckle. I usually use this half, it doesn't matter, it's just a personal preference, but I would recommend for a business that you choose one and stick with it to make your collars look all the same, it just looks more professional. So I'm going to take the centre point of my starter cord and put it through the buckle from the bottom up and here I'm just going to place my D-ring on top. It will slide around just now but once you have the knot completed it will stay in place. So what you're going to do is take this loop and we're going to pull it through a little and then place it to the back of the buckle and the D-ring. And then I'm going to pull the ends until it is nice and tight. And if I turn it over here, you'll see what looks like a single lark's head knot on the back. We're going to use this to create our double lark's head knot. So you're going to take the end of one of your strands. I like to work left to right. Again, it's just a preference. Once you find your end, you're going to take it through the buckle like we did before from the bottom up and you won't be able to see it here because it's so long but we have created a loop and this is where your strand is going to go through towards the back so take the end and you're going to put it through your loop and off to the side and just pull until that is all nice and tight and what you'll see is one half of your double lark's head knot is complete. And we're just going to repeat that exact thing again with our right strand. So you're going to find the end and you're going to put it through the buckle from the bottom up. See this loop here that we've created? You're going to put it through the loop towards the table or towards your counter. And then I'm going to pull it off to the side until I've created the second part of my double cow hitch or double lark's head knot. So now we're going to attach the starter cord to the other half of our buckle and I'm just going to use my ruler to measure. So Poirot will usually get a 13 inch collar because he's so fluffy but because this is quite a thick braid I'm going to measure 15 inches. And once I have that measured, I'm just going to take the ends of my starter cord and we're going to attach it to the buckle. So I'm going to take the ends and go from the top down. And don't worry about the measurement just now, just pull the buckle all the way through and then we'll use our ruler to measure again. So now that I've pulled it through, I'm just going to use my ruler to re-measure from one end of the buckle to the other end where both halves join together. 
and I want that to be 15 inches in total. So your measurement will include your buckle. So I'm just going to put one end at the start of my ruler and pull the other half through until I get to 15 inches. And once I've got that measurement, I'm just going to do the second round of double arcs head knot. So I'm going to fold my starter cord over at the right measurement. And what I'm going to do is take my two ends through the middle. Once your two strands are through the middle, like so, you're just going to repeat what you did on the first half of the buckle. So like the last time, I'm going to start with my left strand. I'm going to find the end and I'm going to bring it through the buckle from the bottom up. Now you'll be able to see it here because it's shorter now, but you see this loop? This is where you're going to take the end of your strand through the back and off to the side, pull it to tighten, and you can already see one half of our double lark's head knot is complete. Now this is where I will always re-measure. I want to make sure that that is still 15 inches from one end of the buckle to the other, where it joins. And for once it is, and I don't even need to adjust it. So I'm just going to go straight in with my right strand and finish off my double lark's head knot. I'm going to find the end and I'm going to bring it through the buckle from the bottom up. I'm going to find my loop again towards the back and off to the side. And when I pull it to tighten, I will have both my double large head knot, but I'm also going to do, because I like to, another set of measurements just to make sure that my collar is still 15 inches. And if it needs a little bit of an adjustment to make it longer, I'm just going to wiggle my middle strands make it slightly longer and then I can get to braiding. Okay so I have my double cow okay, hitch so knot now that I've double got my double lark's head knot I'm going to start, I'm going to start braiding. I'm going to use the end the that has strands, the strands strand attached to it but before I do before anything I do I'm any going to first attach my micro cord, cord that I'm going to thread my beads onto. Now this now, can this be a little bit fiddly, you tricky. might need to watch it Not once so or twice. We're end. going to do so pretty much what we did with these, our large head knot, side. we're going to create one of those, right. but so one of the ends of the cord is going to be quite close to the, the buckle. So take just your end through flip. again from the bottom up then you're and just hold that with the thumb. Bring the rest of your cord through and you're going to place it over that strand that you're holding with your thumb and towards and the, back. Towards the back. back. I'm hoping you can see it is quite this. tricky to film. And once and I've done I'm that, I'm going to pull it through, it back up through, pop it again yeah. through the buckle through from the, the bottom up. And, and that loop that you had just here. created, you're going to put the end through that, through that loop. And again, it's going to go towards the back. I'm just going to pull it to tighten and here. You might need to watch that a few times. <laughs> and and really the micro cord can be a bit slippy. You might want to use something with a bit more grip to it. But I'm going to pull it to tighten slippy, until the end is fairly like close. Sort of and what I'm going to then do is singe it so to it the rest of the cord so it's not going to go now, anywhere. Like to seal it. So make sure the, the, the other cord. cords are out the way as much as possible. And you're going to get so your lighter my pliers as well, and I metal with the my pliers. pliers. Now I'm using my pliers to press the melted end into the rest of the cord. So keep everything out of the way and watch your fingers turning. We're going to just singe the end. Now, microcord is a bit more flammable, so it will catch on fire. If you've never used it before, just watch out for that. I'm going to melt it until it's fairly close to the end, and then I'm going to use the metal part of my plier to just press that in. And once, once it's it adhered to the cord, it is pretty much not going anywhere. I have had to take a few of these apart just to reuse the materials, and it does take a while, so <laughs> trust that it will stay where it is. Turn it back over. There we go, now we are all ready to start braiding. So we'll take your grey strand and just pop it out the way for now. We're going to take the two loose pink strands and we're going to create a cross. Now this is a bit fiddly, so you might need to watch it more than once, but once you've got the hang of it, you will honestly fly through it. I'm going to take one of my flower strands and find the centre, and you're going to place it under that pink cross that you've just made. Now I'm going to take that grey strand again and what I'm going to do with it, I'm going to try and hold all the cords you can see, I'm going to put it under the loop, through the pink cross and towards the back between the purple strands. So I'm going to try and put it 
under this purple loop that I've created, between the strands of the pink cross, and then I'm going to put it through to the back between the purple strands and underneath all those other strands at the side. And then I'm just going to pull it tight. All right, now to create the first petal of the flower, I'm going to take the ends of my purple strand and I'm going to put it through that purple loop with each end of the strand going to either side of the grey. So if I pull this down for you here, you'll be able to see a little bit better. So my left strand is going to the left side of the grey and to the back. And then my right strand is going to the right side of the grey and to the back. So you want your grey strand to be in the centre of everything. And then you're just going to need to pull each bit of your collar individually. So right now I pulled the purple and then I'll tighten up the pinks and then the grey. And just until it looks nice and tight and then we can move on to the rest of our flower petals. Okay, so now we can move on to do the next part of our flower petals. I'm going to take the left strand again and we're going to do what I like to call an over under over under. So I'm going to take the purple over the pink strand and up through that loop, pull it to tighten and then I'm going to do the under. So I'm going to take the purple under the pink strand and down through the loop and pull it to tighten. Now you want to make sure when you pull this strand that you don't pull it out because otherwise the horizontal bit of the petal will sit up and it's just going to look a bit weird so you want to make sure that you pull it down but I'll be honest I find it easier if I just flip it over and then tighten it this way and then flip it back. Now because my beads are a little bit bigger they're about 14 millimeters I need to make sure that between the first and second petal there's a little bit of extra room just to accommodate that. If you're using smaller beads you don't have to worry about this but when I do my over and then through the loop I'm going to leave a little bit of pink in between just so that the flower center can be bigger and then I can move on and just do the exact same with the second half of my petal and take the purple under the pink strand and then down through that loop and again I'm just gonna flip it over to tighten and then we are done with our left section now we're just going to repeat that exact same thing on the right, but I'm going to talk you through it again before we close it off and create our first flower. So take your purple on your right side and you're just going to repeat the over under over under. Take the purple over your pink strand and up through that loop that you've created. Pull it to tighten. And then you're going to take that purple strand again and you're going to do the under. So you're going to put it under your pink strand and then down through that loop to create petal one on the right side. And then for our second petal, over the pink strand, up through the loop, tighten, and under the pink strand, down through the loop, and tighten. Okay, now before we finish off our flower, we're going to need to add our bead. So we'll take the end of your grey strand, whatever you're using, and I'm just going to use a purple bead for my dark purple flowers and a silver bead for my light purple flowers. Pop your bead onto your micro cord. And then this bit, I feel like I say this with every step, this bit's very fiddly. They all are. It's quite a difficult collar, but we'll get through it. So you're going to create another pink cross with your starter cord. And again, you want your grey cord to be in the middle of it. So you're going to make sure it's between your cross. So it's going to go over one strand of your cross and under the other. I'm just going to separate these so that you can see a little bit better. Now I'm going to take my purple and it's going to have to go under everything. So I'm going to try and lift my cross and I'm going to put it under all of those strands and then into the centre. 
it's still going to stay on the left strand, the left side, sorry, of the grey strand. And then this loop here, we're going to take the end back through it and then just pull it tight just a little bit, enough that it's not going to go anywhere, but not too tight that you can't do the right side. So I'm just going to repeat that exact same thing with the right strand of purple. I'm going to take the purple under absolutely everything to the back and then this tiny loop here I'm going to put the end of my purple strand through it towards the back and then just pull it to tighten and then like we did with the start you then just need to go off and tighten all the little bits so I'm gonna tighten my pink strands my purple pull my grey repeatedly until I have that flower that I'm looking for. Now because my beads are a bit bigger than I would like, I would prefer them to be about 10mm, it is a bit trickier for me to create this flower so I have to fiddle around with it and get the petals in the right place. If you're using slightly smaller beads then you won't really have this problem, it'll be a bit easier for you to tighten. But you can see here we have created our first flower and all we need to do now is to singe the ends and make sure they're not going to go anywhere. So I've just flipped my collar over and this is where we're going to cut and singe our spare strands of cord. Now we want to make sure that it's melted kind of to those strands there just so that it's not going to go anywhere. So I'm just going to move all my other cord out the way and I'm going to grab my scissors and I'm going to cut fairly close to the end. You want a little bit left over so there's enough room to burn and I'm going to just take my lighter have my pliers at the ready again and I'm just going to singe the end of this cord now this cord won't go on fire quite like the micro cord did but we're just going to melt it down try not to melt the rest of your cord because you don't want it to split open I'm going to use my pliers to press it in and there you'll see it singed itself kind of to the rest of that purple and a little bit of the pink and now we can just repeat that on our other side. So again, I'm just going to move the rest of the cord out of the way because I don't want to accidentally burn that. I'm going to take my scissors and snip close to the end, like I did the last time. I'm going to pull it just through a little bit more with my pliers and use my lighter just to melt the ends. And once that is melted enough, I'm just going to take my pliers again and just repeat what I did the last time by pressing the pliers into the melted cord and making sure it singes onto the rest of the purple. And there we have it, we have completed our first flower. Now just to repeat that nine more times. So just like before we're going to create a cross with our pink strand. And then I'm going to take my grey out the way again and I'm using light purple this time for the next flower. I've already found my centre point and I'm going to place it under the cross just like this. Now the difference between this one and the one that we did before is we're going to ignore the loop this time. We're not going to go under it. We're going to go straight for the cross and go between the cross and then back through the purple and off to the side. The reason for this is if we went under the loop then the horizontal part of the petal would be sticking up through the collar and we don't want that this time. So take your ends of your purple strand and either side of the grey just like last time, pop it through the back and out to the side, through the back and out to the side. And then just tighten everything as you go to create petal one again of our next flower. Okay, so now we're just going to repeat what we did with flower one. We're going to go over our pink strand, up through the loop and tighten. And then we're going to go under our pink strand, down through the loop and tighten. And again for our second petal, over our pink strand, up through the loop, under our pink strand, down through the loop.
and then just repeat that exact same thing over the pink strand, up through the loop, tighten, under the pink strand, down through the loop, tighten. Over the pink strand, up through the loop, tighten. Under the pink strand, down through the loop, tighten. And just like before, we're going to take our grey strand and I'm going to put another bead on it. I'm going to put a silver one on it this time. And we're going to do our closing petal again. So create your pink cross, making sure your grey strand is in between. Take one of your purple strands under everything and into the middle. You see this loop here? You're going to put your purple strand down through it. So you should have two pink strands on one side and then your purple strand on the other. And it's going to go between those. So take your end and pop it down through that loop there towards the back and out to the side, pulling to tighten slightly. You might need to adjust some of your pink strands and move your grey one, make sure it's still between your cross before you do the other side. And with the right side under everything, take the end and put it down through that loop. Make sure you have your two pink strands on one side and your purple on the other. And then you're just going to pull everything bit by bit to tighten until it's into a flower shape again. Okay, so now that we've finished our second flower, we're just going to do what we did with the first and cut each of our strands and cinch it with a lighter and press it into the cord. After this, what I'm going to do is off camera, I'm going to go and finish the rest of the flowers. But if you think you might need to watch that again, because it is quite a tricky thing to learn, what to do is just rewind the video, go back and watch, <clears throat> watch the first two flowers again, and then you'll be able to pick up each one as you go. I'm going to finish this and then I'm going to come back and show you how to completely finish the starter chords. So right now I'm just going to do what I did the last time. I'm going to use my lighter, I'm going to singe the ends, Till the wax is melted, the cord has melted, not the wax. And then I'm just going to use my pliers, press that into the cord so it adheres to itself. And then just repeat that with the other section. So I have finished the rest of the flowers, 10 of them in total, and now we just need to finish off our starter cord and our micro cord. So what we're going to do is, we're going to put it through this horizontal loop at the back. I've already done this with my grey strand. So what I've done is I've tucked the grey strand towards the back, and then I've taken it up through that loop, and we're just going to do that with our pink starter cords as well. So they're going to go through this loop and then we're going to cut them and singe them all together and what this will do is it will also catch the grey cord in the melted section so it's not going to go anywhere so your beads are going to stay put. This is where the needle nose pliers really do come in so I'm going to just loosen this bit so I can get the ends of my pliers through. This can be a bit fiddly so it might take a couple goes and then I'm just going to put the end of my cord into the very tips of my pliers and use that to pull it through. And I'm just going to repeat this with my right side and then I'm going to cut them and singe them.
Okay, grab your scissors and we're just going to cut all three strands. And again, you want to make sure everything is out of the way because you've come this far and you don't want to catch anything else with your lighter. So make sure when you use your lighter, you're only catching the very ends of this cord until they're melted enough to use the pliers to press them in. And there we go. Now what I would do is I would go back with the lighter and I would just burn that again and just smooth it out because you don't want anything jaggy being on the dog's neck. So you want to make sure all of your sealed ends are quite smooth, especially if you've got a smooth coated dog. But otherwise you have successfully made your very own flower braid collar. Alright guys, thank you so much if you've stuck with me this far, well done. I would love to see any photos of anything that you make, especially on your dogs. And make sure, as always, that you like, comment, subscribe, all the usual stuff. And make sure you catch my next video, which will be a personalised bandana video. Other than that, hope you guys had a good time making these collars. See you all later. Bye!